Hello everyone, thank you for the response on the initial video of the servo. It was only really meant to be a sort of a blog post regarding what I was doing with the Arduino. But since the response, I've decided to share some of the secrets that I discovered along in the making of the video. So here's the setup that was used last time. And this time here I'm actually going to show you all of the wiring as well as uh, some of the programming that I've done on the computer. So without further ado, let's go and take a look here at the wiring. So, on this side here, I've got a 24 volt power supply. You saw this in the last video, and we've got the green wire, which is just the ground, so don't worry about that. We've got the white wire, which is the voltage negative, and the red wire, which is the voltage positive. These two wires are coming along over here into this breadboard, so we have the white wire going into the black wire right here. Now if you want to take a look here at the server manual and go over to the correct page, we can see here uh, the chapter for the control mode of position. And in the schematic that we're given here, we want to use the COM negative, which is pin 37, along with the negative uh, anode of the power supply. Now the other one, which is the COM positive, or pin 36, is going to be connected to the voltage positive of the power supply. That's really the most important and critical thing already done. That's the only thing you can really mess up here. Everything else doesn't really matter if you correct it uh, correct or not. Um, the server might just do some weird things. You're not going to do any damage by misconnecting any of this, but again, don't hold me liable if you do. Pin number three, which is DI0, is the servo enabling. And the servo enabling, as well as the arm release, the forward limit, re reverse limit, we can go over these in a moment. They'll all be connected to the, volt, the V0, which is the negative anode of the power supply. So if you have a look here at the breadboard, this uh, orange wire here is connected to pin number three, which is also connected to the negative voltage of the power supply. So this will actually enable the servo to be on and off. Right now this is plugged in, and that is why if we go over here to the servo and try and move this thing, it's going to be very difficult to uh, it's going to be very difficult to try and move the servo. It's completely stuck. However, if I go in and disconnect this orange wire, just like so, and go over back here to the servo, I can move this around freely. Okay, and I'll reconnect it now. And as you can see, it's not possible for me to move this thing here at all. Now let's go on and talk about the actual movement of the servo. It's important to note that we're doing something called position moving. In which case, we're actually sending steps to the servo and telling it how much it wants to move per step. In the servo manual of your servo, you're going to have a parameter that sets the electronic gearbox ratio of the servo. On this particular servo here, we have a 28-bit encoder However, I've changed the electronic gear ratio on this servo to be 1000 gears per revolution. That reason is merely because an Arduino such as this one can only produce a set amount of tone. Uh, if you try and go too fast with these, the microcontroller won't be able to switch on and off quick enough, uh, and you'll end up having just noise instead of an actual output. Differently, if you have something like a Mesa board, the MESA board will actually be able to produce the amount of frequency required to run the servo at any speed you might want. Of course, within reason that is. Generally speaking, I don't think pulses should be less than a couple of nanoseconds at most. Uh, but in any way, let's go ahead and take a look at what we've connected here. In the servo manual, it says very cl clearly that if you're using 24 volt or 12 volt, you need to be using an external resistor with the 24 volt and unless you're connecting it to the OPC. We're not doing any of these actually. We're going to be using the Arduino instead. And that is because these phototransistors inside of here are perfectly capable of running at 5 volts. It's just in an electronic, uh, in an industrial area with lots of noise electronics, you might get some noise. However, this is not the case and we're able to run it just fine. What we're going to do here is that we're going to connect pin number 1 and 2, as well as pin number 17 and 16, 
to these three pins here on the Arduino. Pin number 12, pin number 12, just there, is going to be the direction positive. Pin number 13 is going to be the pole, so, uh, excuse me, pin number 13 on the Arduino is going to be the pole positive. So let's go and go over this one more time. Pin number two in this connector is going to pin number 13 in this connector. Pin number, uh, let me see here, pin number 17 in this connector is going to pin number 12 in this connector. The pole minus and the pole direct are both connected to each other. So pin number one is connected to pin number 16 and they're both going to ground in this connector. That's all the wiring done. It looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. And now that we've gone over the wiring, let's go ahead and take a look here at the code. This code here is going to be in the description of the video in case it's a little bit difficult to see here. At any rate, we're creating a constant integer pin 12, which is equal to 12. We're creating a constant integer pin, pin 13, which is equal to 13. In our setup module, we're going to we're going to switch on the pin 12 as an output, as well as the pin 13 as an output. The ground is always going to be enabled in an Arduino, so we don't need to do anything about that. The serial begin is going to be 9600, uh, 9, uh, and that is just the baud rate of the Arduino. Why it's set that way, I don't know. <laughs> now let's go in and start some programming. I've already written in a couple of lines here. We can go in and talk about what this will do. Um, in a moment. Pin number 12 is going to be set to high. When it's set to high, the servo will be going in the clockwise direction. When this is set to low, it will be going in the counterclockwise direction. We're going to be playing a tone here, which is a frequency on pin 13, which means that pin 13 is going to go up, it's going to be high, it's going to go down, it's going to be low. At a frequency which is going to be this. So my servo was set up with parameter number 48. We can go over here to the servo actually. Uh, we, parameter number 48 is set at 1000. This means it will take 1000 pulses to move the servo one rotation. Right? So it will take 1000 pulses to move the servo one rotation. This is happening every second. So we're going to have 10 rotations on the servo every single second. We're going to wait five seconds, and then we're going to say, take the digital right, pin 12, low. And maybe play a tone here, um, pin 13, which is going to be, say, uh, two times. Awesome. And then another delay of two seconds. There we go. And let's go and change this down so that we don't get such an abrupt change of motion. All right, that seems about good there. We can go ahead and verify our servo code. And it appears this is fine. Now we can go over to the actual servo. We can take a look here. So, right now, I'm going to upload the code. Pressing upload. And we should see some movement here on the servo. There we go. Moving for five seconds. Moving backwards. We'll be going forward at once more. I'll leave it up to you guys what you want to do with this. Really, it's none of my concern. However, I hope that I've given you guys all the tools that you'll need in order to connect to your own servo. Before I leave this video, I want to show one more thing. These extension boards can be very useful with these connectors. As you can see, we have a lot of pins. If you want to be filling out all the pins, which you should do in an industrial setting, you absolutely need to fill it out, out all these pins. However, do be careful, not all of these pin layouts are the same. Your pin layout should be present in your servo manual guide. Do not trust any other guide to show you where your pins are. In worst case scenario, you can take off this cover and have a look at the photo transistor wiring that is behind this cover. Make sure 
double and triple check all of your connections before turning on the power. And that's it. Thank you a lot for watching and I wish you great success in your servo endeavors. Goodbye.